Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where you discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. It is May. How is everyone feeling? I know time has been feeling like it's going by very quickly, and I'll share with you why scientifically in this episode, but I wanted to ask you, how are you doing? What is showing up for you? How has May been? This month in Rose Gold Goddesses, my membership community, we are diving into Bridget, who is the goddess of re-emergence and really represents who do you seek to become after this quarantine experience? What aspects of yourself do you want to take into the new paradigm and which do you seek to leave behind? And really thinking of ourselves like that Mr. Potato Head who is choosing, okay, I'll, I'll take the eyes, but maybe not the nose and maybe the lips and really crafting the parts of ourselves that we seek to move into the new paradigm. So maybe the anxiety doesn't want to come, but the sense of humor does. So this is really our time to go inwards, to reflect and to get clear on who we are and who we wish to be as we re-emerge into society. And that's what we're really diving into this month in Rose Gold Goddesses. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the word meaning because a huge question that I get asked all the time as you know, a Dharma author and expert is how do we find meaning? How do we find a sense of meaning, especially in these times right now that we're at home all the time and we don't have the events and the travel and the job opportunities and a lot of the things that we tied our sense of meaning and purpose into. So how do we find it right now in this quarantine experience? So that's what we're going to be diving into in today's episode. So first, I want you to think of what the word meaning means to you. What does meaning mean? What does a life of meaning mean? This has meaning. That has meaning. She is meaningful. That year was full of meaning. What does that word mean to you? So to me, the word meaning means significance, something of significance, something of importance, of value. But I think significance is really the best word for it because something can be important, but not significant to us. Something can have value, but not be significant to us. But significance is something memorable. So to have meaning is to have significance. However, that word significance is still going to be different for each and every person. And more than that, it's going to be different in the various stages in our lives. You know, if there's one thing that Ayurveda teaches, Ayurveda, the world's oldest health system and the sister science of yoga based on the mind-body connection, which I've written in two books on, but that we are ever-changing beings. So what was meaningful and powerful for us at one point of our lives may not be what is meaningful and powerful for us right now. And being honest with ourselves of what we really value in this moment, what is giving us that sense of meaning and purpose. So when you have children, that's going to be very different from when you don't and when they're older and different stages of your life and their lives, et cetera. So how do we find what is meaningful for us? Well, it takes getting quiet. It takes getting quiet with ourselves to really listen to what meaning is for us at this moment. So I want to ask you a couple questions and I invite you to either write down the answers or you could think them in your head, but really let yourself experience this right now. What does a day of meaning look like for you? A day of meaning. How do you spend your time? What do you do? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does a month of meaning look like for you? If you looked back, you said, May was one of the most meaningful months of my life. What does that mean? What does a year of meaning look like for you? 2020 was the most meaningful year of my life. What happened for you? What showed up? And lastly, what does a life of meaning look like for you? Looking back, I had a meaningful life. 
What comes to mind? A life of meaning. What is it rich with? Now, some of these answers may have surprised you because sometimes we find meaning in the things that we once saw as meaningless. This quarantine has taught us to reevaluate what meaning means for us. Because as a society, for centuries, we have attached meaning to externalities. And now we can't find meaning in going to work or going to events or our social circles or anything outside of ourselves. So what does meaning look like for you in this moment? What has shown up for you in this quarantine? What lessons have you learned about yourself? What were the things that you were too busy for before that are actually giving you the greatest sense of meaning of all? So as I write about in my next book, Discover Your Dharma, there are seven universal archetypes that exist inside all of us. And we all have all of these archetypes, but in varying amounts. And I really dive deep into them in Discover Your Dharma out in January. But for me, this quarantine experience has brought out my inner artist and entertainer archetypes, you know, through my TikTok videos. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, you may not have seen all the TikTok videos that I'm doing right now on the TikTok app, but every day I'm doing dances and skits and just like funny comedy things about spirituality. And it has brought me such a sense of joy and meaning and purpose. Whereas before, like two months ago, no way. I was too busy for TikTok. I was too busy to goof off and make videos. I had a business to run and books to write, etc. So for me, it's brought out my inner artist and entertainer archetype. I've been dancing more. I've been doing acrylic pouring, things that I was too busy for before. So what has this quarantine brought out for you? Is it your inner gardener or your chef? Is it your healer or your entrepreneur? Is it your inner researcher or your visionary? So these are the aspects of yourself that you have been too busy for and have honestly suppressed because you didn't deem them as meaningful in your prior life. But in this new paradigm moving forward, you get to take these new aspects of yourself that have come to surface in this quarantine because you're able to see the significance that they hold for you. They were missing pieces of the puzzle that you now get to have together and then bring back some of the parts of you that you are missing so you can become whole. So meaning does not just come in one thing that we do, but it really comes from the sense of wholeness. And as I was really pondering about the word meaning and finding meaning, I realized, like I do with most things in my life, is that we can classify them in three forms. Can you guess? the three doshas, the Ayurvedic mind body types. So there are three forms of meaning. The first form is vata. The meaning of vata is creativity, to bring beauty to the world. And that happens through arts, writing, creating skits, styling your home, writing poetry, songs, sound bowls, makeup, whatever it is that allows you to tap into your creativity this is your vata sense of meaning, and we all have it, and we all need it. No one will feel complete without tapping into their creative vata essence. The second form of meaning is our pitta form. This happens when we achieve our goals. A lot of us in the spiritual community, we are like, ugh, goals, yuck. But as humans, we actually are extremely goal-oriented beings. We always have been for centuries. I mean, if you look back on the Incan Empire, they had a goal of creating Machu Picchu. Or if you look back in the Persian Empire, they had the goal of creating Persepolis. So we have always had goals. It is necessary for the human mind to be focusing their energy and attention on something that they peg and then climb their way up to embody. 
This is necessary. And what I have noticed for a lot of us right now is we're missing this pit to sense of purpose in our quarantine because our lives previously were so focused on goal achieving, but they were not goals that were in alignment with our dharma, with our divine truth. They were just goals, financial goals based on survival, based off of appraisal, based off of external societal conditions. So because of that, because we were so goal-oriented, but external goal-oriented, because there's a difference between external and internal goals. External goals, again, are for the outside world. Internal goals are for within yourself, and they are extremely important. So a lot of us have swung the pendulum the other way, and we were so focused on achieving external goals, money, this, that, that when this quarantine began, and also because we thought it was going to be two weeks or so, we're like, I don't want to do anything productive. I just want to chill and watch Netflix. Like, I need to rest. And that's fine. I think a lot of us genuinely needed that. We needed to sit into the kapha, the, the sacred pause. But now that we're seeing that we're still here, you know, two plus months later, and it's probably going to be some sort of version of this for the next couple months too. We don't know how long. We have to have a sense of purpose related to our pitta goal achieving nature to feel complete, to feel whole. And there is nothing unspiritual about that. In fact, the most spiritual societies from ancient Egypt to The Vedic times always had a sense of goals. How did they come up with astrology or medicine or herbology? Because they set goals. They said, we need to heal this person. We need to find meaning of the stars. We need to do these things. So it really helps us peg ourselves to something larger than us. So one easy thing to do if you feel very disconnected from your pitta, your fire energy right now, is exercise. I think a lot of us gave up exercising the first month or so of this quarantine because we didn't know how to exercise at home. We energetically were feeling really down. We felt like we didn't have the energy to exercise totally fine. But right now, we need that sense of heat, that sense of fire, that sense of, I'm going to set the goal of doing this workout. And even though it's hard, and even though I'm going to not want to do it at some point, even though it's going to be easier for me to pick up my phone or give up, I'm going to finish this. And doing that actually increases your dopamine levels because you set this goal for yourself and you brought it to your reality. So we should all be exercising and it really enhances all of our pittas, but especially if you feel detracted from that side of yourself. The other thing that we do a lot in our society is gamifying things. And this is related to the sense of purpose that we get from being in the pitta. So when we gamify something, we essentially give ourselves a reward for doing it. We make the journey a little bit more fun, playful, competitive, and people with a more pitta essence love doing this. So for example, this is why people love doing challenges, right? Like a 21-day challenge, or we had our rose gold goddesses seven-day challenge, or five-day challenge, actually. And People love having these challenges because it's this way of, okay, if I meditate every day for these five days, then I will feel more peaceful or embodied or happy or whatever it is. So if you're someone who loves, you know, a little bit of playful competition, gamify the things that matter to you. If every day you do your breath work, then you get a new piece of art or you get X, Y, Z thing. Make it a game for yourself. Make it fun for yourself because then when you achieve that goal, you're going to get that hit of dopamine and that's going to fuel you to continue to achieve your other goals. And then the deeper part is set that goal within yourself. Don't set a goal because you think it's what you're supposed to do, but be really honest to yourself. You know, sometimes your goal can be launching a business and doing something that is extremely scary. And sometimes your goal can be letting go of a career that wasn't serving you. And that is just as scary. So honor who you truly are, what your gifts are, because there are limitless opportunities in this world. And if we take every single one of them, we're actually never going to be able to see any of them through. To really become a master, we have to continue something to bring it to fruition and then keep doing it to bring it to its highest level. And I I see a lot of people don't want to put that dedication to something. They want the success and I'm calling it out. A lot of people, I want a million followers and I want a top book or podcast or whatever it is, but they're not willing to keep showing up and putting in the work that it takes to be a master. I mean, look at 
you know, martial arts traditions or meditation or dance, like the masters have put in years and years and years of work and continue to be a student. But in our social media world, we want to be the master of something before really being the student. So if, again, if you feel disconnected from the side of yourself, have a goal for yourself. Maybe you want to learn origami, or maybe you want to learn how to create a website, or maybe you want to learn how to become a good gardener, whatever it is. But set that goal for yourself and continue day in and day out to bring it to your reality. Now, the third form of meaning is our kapha. Our kapha is our earth energy, our grounded, anchored energy. You know, when you, when you feel that sacred pause, that is the kapha. And it is related to connection as well as service. So that kapha sense of meaning comes when you are truly able to help someone else. This can be someone in your family. Maybe you have an elderly parent who's really struggling right now, a brother or a sister who lost their job, a child at home really being of service to this person, and also our sense of service to humanity, which none of us get to skip. I think a lot of us think, oh, well, I'm already so of service to my family or to whatever. Well, there's also this planet that we're all a member of the community of, and our planet needs our help too. And sometimes the greatest thing that we can do is to get out of this perpetual feeling that we need to be healed and perfect and whole and all our chakras in balance and all of our past lives healed and all of our ancestors happy. Like, that's never going to happen. And Really why we do this is because we're afraid of stepping into our fullest expression. And when we're afraid of stepping into our fullest expression, we put excuses that, well, because I'm not totally healed and totally fixed and totally perfect, then who am I to help anyone else? Honey, you, exactly where you are, someone that listens to Highest Self Podcast, someone that's this deep into the episode, honey, you have a lot to share. You have a lot that you can serve and pass along to others just where you are right now. In fact, 99% of the population (laughs) could learn a great deal from you. So we get to get rid of this brainwashing in our minds that comes from our education system that tells us, oh, well, you have to have this amount of degrees and this amount of work experience or whatever it is for you to even open your mouth. Like, no, like there are certain things like being a surgeon, of course, you got to go to school for that. But like helping someone go through a hard time, you don't need to be a psychologist to do that. You just need to be a human. So this cough sense of purpose comes when you truly allow yourself to be of service and you're not doing it for them to get you back next time. You're not doing it to get some clout on social media. You're not doing it for any of those purposes. You're doing it because it is the highest form of joy, is the highest form of purpose and meaning. I mean, ask anyone, including yourself, when have you felt the happiest And for most of us, one of those times is going to be being of service to others. So right now, a lot of us do feel disconnected from that side of ourselves because we can't necessarily volunteer at the soup kitchen or somewhere travel to another country and volunteer. That's not an option for us right now. But that doesn't mean that we can no longer be of service. In fact, there are more people now that need your service than ever before. So how can you be of service? What are the unique gifts that you can share with the world? We don't all need to be giving food at the soup kitchen to be of service. Maybe you can teach people art, or maybe someone else can style their hair, and maybe someone else can share with them different healing herbs, and someone else can teach them how to grow a home garden. Just from the internet, there's so much that we could share. So this is really our invitation to drop any excuses or limiting beliefs that tell us that we have to be in perfect health and perfect condition and perfect everything to even open our mouths and realize that perfection never exists. There's always going to be another past life to heal. And we get to step up and take responsibility and realize that exactly where we are is the perfect place to truly begin being of service. And this is how that kapha sense of meaning comes forth. So 
I invite you to ask yourself, which type of meaning are you needing more of right now? Maybe you have had a lot of service and you're actually needing more creativity, more vata. Or maybe you have been constantly working towards your goals this quarantine and you're needing more kapha, more connection. Or maybe you have been doing a lot of arts, but you're really wanting to create a business out of it or set a goal with it. You're needing more pitta. So look at yourself, see which dosha am I kind of feeling depleted in and make this your goal. Make this the desired form of meaning that you are calling in. And also different people who are born with different doshic constitutions will require different amounts. So I am vata pitta. Those are my two primary doshas in that order. So for me, my highest form of meaning is through creativity and arts. And that's why I've been doing my TikTok videos and dancing, etc. But my secondary dosha is pitta. So I do like being busy. I do like, you know, continuing with my business and this and that. I'm not trying to start a new business right now, but I like being involved with it. And then that last dosha for me, the kapha, was one that I had to remind myself, okay, take the sacred pause, just take today to really connect to my partner. And because of what I do is so being of service, I'm in a way always being able to tap into that because it's what I've dedicated my life to. So look at the doshas for you, which are the ones that you are really in, maybe your career, maybe you are a nail artist. So your career has been very in the vata, but you have been wanting more kapha, etc. And then take whichever dosha is lacking and make this your focus for the next month or so and, and see how you feel. You know, that could have been that missing piece of the puzzle for you that could have given you that feeling of wholeness, that really living in, in alignment with your dharma gives. So again, we each have the responsibility for ourselves to find our own unique version of meaning. If everyone honored their own unique versions of meaning, we would have no more suffering in this world because each person would find what makes them whole. So don't worry so much about, well, there's other people who are suffering and there's other people who are hurting and I can't be happy until like every single person in the world is completely free of all problems. However kind that feeling may arise from, it actually isn't helping anyone because there's always going to be people who aren't choosing joy. There's always going to be people who want to stay in their victim story. And at some point in their lives, that, that could have been us too. So instead of bringing ourselves down and saying, well, because other people are sad or because my neighbor or my friend or whatever is sad, I should be sad too because that's what being a good person is. We get to realize that the only way that we can really be of service is to radiate like the sun beings that we are. Because when we embody the sun, we realize that our joy, our radiant expression, our magnetism is the greatest form of healing for humanity. And the sun doesn't choose where it's going to shine. <laughs> it doesn't say, oh, well, there's shadows over there, so I'm gonna ignore that area, or this person's low vibe, so they don't get my sun. No, it's not like that. The sun just shines. It says, here I am, I am shining, I am radiant, I am joyful, I am confident. And no amount of shadows is going to bring me down. In fact, I will bring my sunlight to all areas of the world, especially those that need the help. And if they aren't ready to receive my son, if they want to remain in the shadows, that's not going to make me change my stance. It's about embodying yourself so deeply into your expression that when someone who is triggered by your expression because they haven't met their own, can't change how you vibrate. Because right now, really, this experience that we're entering into is a choose your own adventure. There are going to be people, and this has always been the case, but it's especially predominant now, but there are going to be people who this year will be a heaven on earth experience. And there will be people who this year, it will be a hell on earth experience. And it's not that someone chooses it for you. It's actually that you choose it for yourself. No matter what situation you're in, you get to choose for yourself. 
And I'll do a whole other podcast about this, but there are people in mansions who are extremely unhappy right now and people in shacks who are extremely happy right now. So it has nothing to actually do with your externality and everything to do with your state within. So I share this with you and I'll do another podcast on this, but we're going to come face to face with these people who are choosing to remain in their victim story and choosing to remain in the shadows and are going to be extremely triggered by us being in our light. And they're going to say whatever they can to try to bring us down because they haven't met the light within themselves. And I want you to remind yourself that this is first of all, not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. But secondly, it is your unique schooling to make you more anchored into your unique expression. Because if someone who is triggered by our expression causes us to lose ourselves, then we are not actually embodying our expression. The more you radiate and the more you expand positivity, the more triggered people there is going to be. Look at history. So we get to sink so deeply into who we are and how we are here to serve and what our purpose and our dharma is that when we come face to face with those people that are so triggered because they haven't found that spark within themselves, we can look at them with compassion and still choose to not make that our story. You know, do no harm, take no shit. So I really wanted to share this with you because this is arising right now, especially as sun beings. We're being confronted by this, and I just wanted to remind you that there is going to be people on every dimension of this experience right now, and we get to set that dimension for ourselves. You can choose if you want to be operating in the 3D, the 4D, the 5D. I recently did a podcast episode a couple episodes back all about this. If you want to learn more about that and how different people are on different dimensions, experiencing different things at this time. But the only way that we will be able to live our lives of meaning is if we anchor into the 5D. So know that those teachers will arise for us. It might be our family, might be friends, might be strangers on the internet. But those teachers will arise the people who trigger us, the people who try to bring us down, the people who question our worth. And they are the unique schooling that we need to embody our dharma. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, I invite you to dive deeper with me in Rose Gold Goddesses, the sacred sisterhood collective all about embodying the goddess within. Basically, it's our own app with 2,000 plus spiritual soul sisters. We have monthly goddess circles facilitated by myself. Every single month, we are working with a different goddess energy. This month is goddess Bridget, who is all about reemergence, renewal, rebranding yourself into who you want to be in the new paradigm. And when you join, you'll receive all eight goddess circles that we've already done, Kali Moff, goddess of transformation, Saraswati, creativity, Lakshmi, abundance, Lalita Sundari, sacred sexuality, Kuan Yin, compassion, Durga, confidence, Yamaya, ease and flow. All of it will be available for you. Plus my masterclasses, Awaken Your Powers Masterclass with Shaman Derek, which is a value of $500 alone. With annual members, you'll also get my Sex Money Magic Masterclass, which is all about tapping into your sacral chakra energy with Alexandra Rock. So again, value of $500, you'll receive it with your annual membership. So many workshops on discovering your dharma, on financial abundance, on breath work, on goddess archetypes, everything you could ever want to really support you in your spiritual journey is available for you in Rose Gold Goddesses. There's nothing in the world like this. And it has been so incredible to see the shifts that it is making for these women. So if you're seeking to dive deeper with me and other soul sisters who truly get you at a core fundamental level, then I invite you to join us in Rose Gold Goddesses. You can find that link in the show notes. It is rosegoldgoddesses.com. And I'm so excited to see you there. If you loved this episode, I would love to send you a free gift, which is the first half of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type. This is a different book than Eat Feel Fresh, my first book ever, which is not released anywhere. And I am gifting it exclusively to those who leave a review of my podcast in the iTunes store. So all you got to do is head over to iTunes where you may be listening to this podcast and leave a review. Take a screenshot that you've left it and email it over to me at sahara at eatfeelfresh.com. Again, that's sahara, S-A-H-A-R-A, at eat 
feelfresh.com. And I will send you back the first half of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type, which goes all into Ayurveda, doshas, plant-based nutrition, body types, all of the things in a really fun and engaging way. So this is my gift to you for free for supporting the podcast. Every single review I personally read, it really helps the podcast be listened to by more people so we can raise the vibration of the planet together. And I am so grateful to have you on this journey. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next episode. Namaste. 